Hey, this is Spencer with Island Live Nation doing the Playpack 200 challenge. Uh, I'm just gonna put these up as I go along in it. Um, I'm doing them in order of release days. Uh, and this is Adam's Venture 2. Uh, it's a pretty interesting game. Um, obviously, this is sped up a lot, but one thing uh, you can't actually skip these cutscenes in the beginning. Uh, at least I couldn't figure out how to. I was using a controller, um, but it, it was a pretty interesting game. Uh, I like the animation in it. It's you know not breathtaking or anything, but they do stylize it to um, make you feel more like you're in this time period. Uh, so that was interesting. Uh, basically, what's going on here is I'm trying to figure out how to get both of us out of this cell. Um, and you just kind of look around and interact with things in the room. As it turns out, you're going to end up using that woman's hairpin to pick the side door there. And um, then you have to kind of shimmy out. You'll see. Ah, uh, there's a little lock picking animation there. It's pretty standard to what you see in most games. Um, a little you know, Tomb Raider kind of shimmying there. Uh, this game has a lot of components that you'll find in a lot of other games uh, thrown into one. And obviously, I didn't play too far into it. Um, the like four to six minutes on each game I'm doing. And then, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> and then uh, speeding it up, obviously, so we can give you guys a short run through. Um, I figured it'd be good just so some people can see what's in the play pack. Um, I might have done it a little too fast, but this is a great game. Uh, Air Conflicts. Secret Wars. I had a lot of fun with this. I just did. I jumped right in uh, dog fighting. Uh, it's a arcade flyer. Um, it's a fun game though. Uh, it's biplanes, obviously. Um, and you don't start out with a lot in the. Um, oh, this is crazy sped up. But uh, yeah, it's you're basically. It's just a basic arcade flyer. Um, machine gun, drop bombs, uh, there's a, a adrenaline button, kind of slows things down, uh, you control your speed, uh, there's not too much or any really pitch and yawn controls, it's very arcade. I didn't actually get around to checking the settings to see if there is a more realistic controller setting, but it's a fun game. Uh, there is multiplayer in it, uh, I didn't find anyone, but I'd be curious to check that out. Uh, maybe get some dogfights going. But yeah, I had a lot of fun with this game. It's definitely um, a good game to check out if you're checking out games in the playback or trying to do the challenge. Um, I'm gonna jump in uh, Alien Soldier here. Uh, this is one of the Genesis games. I do a few of the Genesis games and then end up skipping them because uh, a lot of them are very similar. Again, this is Alien Soldier. This was uh, like this funky alien chicken, and it's your classic side scroller shooter. Um, you do get multiple weapons to choose from and like a quick launch menu, which is really cool for the period. Um, it's a game mechanic that is still important in fighting games today. Um, and a lot of games that you play fighting, there's a quick launch inventory for weapons. I think uh, like Dead Island it's on service now. Same kind of deal. Um, but you got like uh, close range weapons and uh, long range and scattering kind of weapons. So that's pretty fun. It gives you a good mix up. Um, it plays really well uh, for the Sega games. I know some of them have some control issues, but definitely check that one out if you love uh, side scroller shooters. We're going in uh, Landstalker now, the Treasure of King Knoll. Um, 
There's a water break there, I think. Uh, I'm trying to remember what this game is. I'm sure I'll remember once we get it in there launched. I believe this... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a adventure game. Um, this is just a cutscene, by the way. This isn't actually me playing. It's another cutscene you can't skip. Um, it's actually pretty long. I'll tell you when the actual game starts here. but I uh, just get some of the story and stuff like that. This is a pretty cool game. It plays like um, any other game I could really compare it to is like Zelda. Um, from the t same time period, like original Nintendo Zelda. Um, you have a uh, like an inventory. It's like a RPG kind of style. Um, I think it's a fun game. Uh, the I couldn't really work the controls too well on a controller. Uh, as you can see here, I actually had a problem with the D-pad. Uh, left and right were working as up and down, and up and down still stayed up and down. Um, and it's kind of hard to play these games with a joystick sometimes, especially the style of the uh, like adventure game. Um, as you can tell, I had no idea what to do there, but it's an interesting game. Um, most of your time is going to be spent in that loading sequence. Or the, uh, opening sequence rather. Right, this is Light Crusader, it's the next game. Um, it's a pretty interesting one. Uh, it's like a, another RPG kind of adventure game. Uh, animation is pretty good at the time. Uh, another cutscene too, you can't skip. Uh, you know, there's a lot of going around talking to people, you have inventory and magic. It's um, so another one. This one actually did control a lot better than the last one. Um, again, I was trying to skip through these conversations as much as I could, but you now you have a, a shop and there's a there's a save space. Um, I thought it was pretty um, forward thinking for its time. And the uh, the inventory and the magic and equipment menus are they look very primitive, but they're pretty much on par what you have today. Um, and you can tell where a lot of today's games come from when you play these games. But that was a good one. I'd check that one out. Um, but I mean, if you're not interested in old gaming, then you're gonna want to skip the Sega Genesis games, obviously. Okay, this is Shining Forge. Uh, another adventure game. Um, this one, I believe, was more of a turn-based RPG game, uh, which was definitely funner. Yeah, I like the animation in it. Uh, yeah, it's that good classic animation. And you gotta expect with all these games that they're gonna be readers. You're gonna do a lot of reading to know what's going on. And I'm just trying to run through these quick, so obviously you're not gonna get any of the story really from them. And chances are, if you're doing a Play Pack 200 challenge, you're not gonna get much story out of them. But hopefully, you'll get an idea of some games you might want to play more. This one also had a pretty nice quick launch menu. Uh, you also use it for talking to people, getting in your inventory. Uh, I think there's some magic. Uh, you interact with conversations. Uh, not unlike Be Good, actually. You have that same smiley face, frowny freeze. Some centaurs there. No, um. It's kind of cool seeing old games like this because they're still pretty popular today. I mean, look at the, like the Pokemon franchise; it's still going strong, and it's the exact same kind of setup, the style of gameplay. All right, that's it for this video. Um, 
should actually, I already recorded the second part. Uh, I just went through another few games. I'm going to try to be doing it all week and getting them up as quick as I can. Um, I think it'd be good. A lot of people will be able to use it to not only see what's in the play pack, but if you don't actually do the challenge, uh, so you can appreciate how tedious it is. It's actually a pretty cool challenge. Um, so hopefully I can complete it. Um, I'm sure I can complete it. I'm not sure if I can actually get it all recorded up and completed that way. Alright, thanks for watching.